entitled Learning and Totally Depending on God. Learning from God and totally depending on Him. Learning and totally depending on God. He is the source of wisdom. He is the source of power. He is the source of everything you ever need in the life. So therefore, we should learn to depend on Him and learn from Him. Do you want to be wise? Learn wisdom from God. Do you want to be enriched? Depend on God and He will give you everything that your soul desires. And I know as many who will diligently listen to this word tonight, our lives will never remain the same again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible told us in Psalm chapter 34 from 11. Psalm chapter 34 from verse 11. Please let a sister there or a brother be reading that so that people that, that didn't hear will, will be taken from there. Psalm 34 from verse 11. And I will say, Come, it's calling you and I tonight. Come, ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord, the soul of life, the soul of riches. Whatever you ever need in the life is wrapped up in the fear of the Lord. Whatever you want to gain in life, if you can have the fear of the Lord, you are a pace setter. The Lord will use you as an epitome of whatever you want to do to his glory if you have the fear of the Lord. And he's telling you an eye tonight, come and we will learn from him. The Lord is calling you, calling me that we should come and learn the fear of the Lord. Come, ye children, hearken unto me and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Verse 12. What man is he that desire life and love it many days that he may see good? 13. Keep the tongue from evil. These are the fear of the Lord that we need to learn from the Holy Spirit. Keep your tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Verse 14. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord, verse 16, the face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut them off, to cut them off the remembrance of them from the earth. Verse 17. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth them, and deliver them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as by of a concrete spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver him out of them all. Twenty. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. 21. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. 22. And the last. The Lord redeemed the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. If you ponder on this place very well, you will see the difference between the righteous and the wicked. The difference between those that fear the Lord and they that fear Him not. If you learn the fear of the Lord, the Bible says He will keep you safe. Everything you ever needed in life to live as a human being, as a wife, as a husband, as a whoever you are, is wrapped up in the fear of the Lord. To learn the fear of the Lord and totally depend on Him. If you learn to depend on God, the Lord will always do whatever you ask of Him. 
because he knows you are always seeking to glorify him. He that tell me, show me a man that depends on God. I will show you a man that glorify God. Show me a man that trusts in God. And I will show you a man who do the will of God. So therefore, the Lord is telling you and I tonight, let us come quietly and learn the fear of the Lord. He said, He keepeth them, and nothing shall my enemies cast them away. He said, The Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart, and of a severe sort of a concrete spirit. He said, Many are the affliction of the righteous. It doesn't matter, but the Lord is there to deliver you. No matter what the enemy does, try to do to you, as far as you have the fear of the Lord, as far as you always say, Lord, I depend on you, Lord, you are my life, you are my everything. It will always, it will always and always deliver you. Praise Master Jesus. When he said, My eyes is upon the wicked to slay them. You that is walking wickedly, the Lord is watching you to slay you. He's targeting you sooner than later if you refuse to repent. He said, He will cut you off, and your remembrance shall be forgotten forever. He has spoken it. He will do it. If you think he's joking, ask Brother Pharaoh. He will tell you where he is right now. Ask those who, are, who, who did wickedly before. And they will tell you where they are now. He will not also spare you. So, brothers and sisters, let us learn to do good. He said, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil. It is time for all to run from evil and do, and do good and seek peace and pursue it. Many of us we learn to pursue evil. We learn to pursue evil things. He said, No, that is not what you should do. Seek peace and pursue it. So that the eyes of the Lord will be upon you for good. So whenever you cry, he will hear you. Your heart cannot be full of evil and you are calling on God. You are planning evil against somebody and are asking God, come and deliver me. Who is deceiving who? Your heart is full of evil. But you are asking God, come and deliver me. It will destroy you. God is not a man. You can't mock him. You can't mock God. Say the face of the Lord is against you, you that doeth evil. Psalm 34, verse 16. I'm um, announcing to you, you that your heart is full of evil. All you are seeking is you and you alone. You can kill to make money. You can destroy, you can bite other person. To can, you can use your mouth to bring other person down. To enter into that place. He said that you announce to you this, this tonight. His eyes is against you. The eye is watching you to, to destroy you, to cut you off, and you will never be remembered again. Praise Master Jesus. He oh, said, man. you that do it righteously, don't worry. This might be rough to you now. But say, I should announce to you, the righteous cry, I should cry tonight. The Lord shall hear you and deliver you from every problem around you in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, because your heart is launching after good things. Your heart is launching after peace, not just your own peace alone, but, but for the peace of those around you. He said, he will always hear you whenever you cry. He will never abandon you. So tonight, no matter what you are going through, no matter what you are been through, as far as you are pursuing peace, the Lord shall grant you peace tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And you also that is doing evil, if you can also repent tonight, that same God will have mercy upon you and also give you that peace tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor. I don't know how labor you have labored, I don't know how far you have labored. The Bible told us in 1 Peter chapter 3, chapter 5, verse 10. Say, may the God of all glory, of, of all peace, after you have suffered a while, 
said he will settle you. He will enlarge you. Everything you ever needed, he will give it to you. Because you have suffered the way. Now, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest. The God I serve is not a liar. He have never lied before. He will not start lying because of you. You are too small for God to start lying so that he will make you happy. He can't do that. You have not done it before. You have not done it to, the, to, the, to, the, to, to those that have gone before. He will not start doing your time. So when he says, I will give you rest, it means I will give you rest. And if you have come to him and that rest, you have not received it, ask yourself a question, what's happened to me? Ask yourself, what have I done wrong that I am not getting the rest? If sincerely you have come to the Lord, that rest, you must have it. Jesus Christ has never lied before. He will not start lying because of me. Who am I for God to start lying because of me? To do what? He's already at the peak of his glory. You are glorifying him, do not add to his glory. You are not glorifying him, do, do not suffer from his glory. So therefore, he has no reason to lie. So he's telling you, and I come unto me, all ye that labor. It means all ye that labor. And heavy laden. And I will give you rest. The only source of rest is Jesus. He's the only one that can give you genuine rest. He said, everlasting peace he will give to you. He said, take my yoke upon you and lean on me. Lean on me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Let us learn from God. He's meek and lowly. But many of us, we are loved in the heart. We are proud in heart. We are proud in mind. Because little thing we have, we think we are not above every other person. It's not supposed to be so. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, if you see him, is as gentle as I, if you if you see the Lord, is is so gentle and meek. But we ordinary human beings, because of one thousand euro in account, we think we are not all in all. Nobody's above us anymore. Nobody can touch us anymore. Because you you, you have little things. Nobody can talk to you anymore. But he that created the whole universe will still come down to us, die with us, and enjoy with us. But you, a lay mortar, you that will die and will bury you in that six feet. You think you are above every... No, it's not supposed to... Say, learn from me. I am meek and lonely in the heart. And you shall find rest in your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us run to Christ now. Let us learn, you know him. Let us learn from him and totally depend on him. Sister, you can't carry that load. No matter how little the load is, you can't carry it. No matter how little the problem is, if Christ is not there for you, that little sickness will kill you. You have seen some people, just little headache. Let me go to the hospital from there to mortuary. So no matter the sickness, that little thing that is there is there to kill you. That little problem is there to humiliate you. It's growing. If you don't run to Christ, that little problem will grow to become a very mighty one. So therefore, I don't know what you are going through. You better leave it for Christ now. You better humble yourself, run away from sin, and give Christ that problem. Now, as that problem will take you to the next level, you'll be surprised. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Say, let your conversation, let your speech, let your doing be without conversiousness. Many people, they don't understand what's conversiousness. So many people, when the Lord bless you, you run away. You will never connect again. They will never see you again. But when problem come, you will, run to, you will run back to God. That is conversiousness. That is what? Conversiousness. When you have problems, you remember there's God. But when it blesses you, you will run away from him. You only remember the source of your blessing when the problem is there. But when the problem, when the problem is solved, you forget the source of your blessing. That is conversiousness. You go to hell. You will go to hell if you don't repair from such sin. You only know God when there's problem around you. You only know the source of your, of your blessing when there's problem around you. But when things are all right, you start gallivanting around and forgetting. That is conversiousness. They let your conversation be without conversiousness and be content with 
certain you have. For he has said unto you and unto me, I will never leave you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. If only you can be okay with what you have and totally depend on him, he know what to do next. Praise Master Jesus. The God we serve is a God who always knows what to do. Next, he knows better than you. But many of us, we try to prove smart to him. He will be looking at you. You will go far and come back to him. You can't do without him. No matter how rich you are, you can't do without God. No matter how famous you are, you can't do without him. A time is coming, your bones will be broken, you will run back to him. That you think, with this thing now, I can be a man and a woman of myself. When that thing go away, you will run back to him. And by that time, you will be laughed at, say, look at you. You thought you can do without me. You can't do without him. But if he said to me, are you now, if we can humble ourselves, come to him with all holiness and righteousness, depend on him, learn from him, he said he will keep us safe. See, he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will keep you blessed. He will make sure that all things are okay with you. He will keep you out of stress. We are all that are only haters It will make life easy for you. Let me tell you something. Even when things are like this now in this world, some people are still living in peace. When all that are only haters scatter, the God of peace also still give people peace today. I am, he said, I am the priest of peace. If you can depend on him, if you can rely on him, no matter how blessed you are, surrender the blessing to him. Know that no, there's nothing you ever have that was, that, that was never from him. So therefore, surrender that blessing unto his hands. Surrender everything you think you have unto him. He will keep them safe. But many of us, whenever <laughs> blessing comes, we run away from him. How far can you run? Whenever you are running, you are exposing yourself to the devil. Little peace you have now. You think, hey, I'm okay now. You expose yourself to danger. And whenever that danger comes, you run back to him again. It's not supposed to be so. Let us run to him and stay with him. Let us run to Jesus Christ and stay with him. He needs us to stay with him. Not just to run to him when we have problems and after problems. When he has hurt us, we run away again. It's not supposed to be so. Total dependence on Christ. Even that blessing. Put that blessing in his hand. You get a job, put that job in his hand. You are married, put that in his hand. So many people, when they are looking for a husband, they run to God. Hey, father, I need a husband. After their marriage, they forget God. Their husband has become their God. What a shame. So people, when they are looking for a job, they start, they run to God. When the job comes, that job now becomes that, that, that job now because that, that becomes their God. What a shame. Such people, I tell them, shame unto you because you don't know what you're doing. You are exposing yourself to the devil. I need a car. Lord, give me a car. Once that car comes, that car now become your God. When it's time to connect, you're in your car driving up and down, gallivanting. The friends that are bad on you for, for years, you start using your car to trace them. What a shame. And when you not expose yourself to danger, and that danger has claimed that from you, you, re you return back to God again. One day, one, a time is coming, as you are returning on your way, trumpet is sound there. What will you do? You and your car will go to hell. So therefore, in every situation, in every condition, in everything you are doing, lay it on the feet of Christ. Put your life in His hand. Put your marriage in his hand. Put your back account in his hand. Everything. Leave it for him. And he will sustain you. Praise Master Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm 55 and 22, Cast your burden upon the Lord. Cast your fears upon the Lord. Cast your marriage upon the Lord. Cast your soul upon the Lord. Everything about you, put it in his hand. And he shall sustain thee. See, the only one that can sustain you is Jesus. Apostle Man cannot sustain you. No pastor can sustain. Many of us, we are closer to our pastor than God. What a shame. 
You think if that man can do it, it's a lie. No man can help you. If a man pray for you and God refuses to answer, that prayer is useless. Many of you here on this mountain, you are close to a pastor more than God. I say shame on you, such a person. You are playing with your soul. Some of us here, we are close to our husband more than God. I say shame on you because you don't know what you are doing. Some of us, we are close to our car, close to the materialities of this earth more than God. I say shame on you because of your work, you have abandoned God. Because of, because of things of this earth, you have abandoned God. One day, those things will abandon you and I will know who you belong to. That person you are depending on, one day that person will abandon you, then I will know who you will cry to. That's why I always take on this mountain, don't put your trust in me because I am also running the race. You are running, I am running. So you don't put your trust in me because you might surprise when you think Apostle Man is praying for you, he's sleeping. Only Christ can never sleep no slumber. Don't trust me. Don't put your trust in me. Only trust in God. You might say, hey, I know Apostle Man is there. Pray for me all the time. Yes, I am praying for you, but not all the time. The only one, but when I was sleeping, I don't pray anymore when I was sleeping. The only one that can, you can totally depend on to trust all the time is God that never sleeps or slumber. After this service now, I can get tired and sleep for one, two, three hours. But there's somebody who never sleeps. Jesus Christ. Put your trust on such a man that never sleeps. Not Apostle Emmanuel, not any pastor in the whole world. You know why? That pastor is also passing through some things. That is, is, is also looking for who he will depend on. So therefore, are you hearing me? Don't ever, ever put your trust on any of the apostles on this mountain because they are also running their race. When they tell you their own self, you will be surprised. Praise Master Jesus. Cast your body upon the Lord. And he shall sustain thee upon the Lord alone. And he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. This is where the problem is. The righteous. If you are living in sin, you are moved already. Your sin has moved you already. The only people who can never be moved are people who are righteous. You can say it's possible. It is possible to be righteous, brother. Don't allow Satan to deceive you. Say, oh, how can I remember if it is possible? Do the right thing. You are righteous. Righteous is for doing the right thing. If you need to lie, if you lie no more, you need to steal, you steal no more, you gossip, you gossip no more, all those things, do them no more. You are righteous. And he said, you can never be moved. No matter how they try to pull you, you can never be pulled down. Because he that is standing for you is greater than them. You go open your eyes to see those who are compassed about you. You go open your eyes to see the angels around you. Mighty, mighty, mighty angels. You will be surprised. Brother, it's good to be holy. It's good to be righteous. And I'm announced to you that it is possible to be righteous. Don't allow Satan to deceive you. If it's not possible, it will not say it. It will not tell you. Cast that body upon the Lord and it shall sustain you. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. If it's not possible, he will not write it. I have come to understand it is possible for a man to be righteous. I have come to understand that no unrighteous thing can enter heaven. As far as somebody is in heaven, that is possible to be righteous. Righteousness with mercy, you are in heaven. If you depend on mercy alone, without righteousness, you can't, get, you can't enter there. Praise Master Jesus. So therefore, do you want to be sustained? Do you want to be strong? Do you want to remain on top? Keep holiness and righteousness. The Lord himself will be fighting your battle for you. While you are sleeping, he will not even send his angel. Himself, the King of kings and Lord of lords, will be around you. And no one can touch you. He will never suffer the righteous to be moved. The problem with, it, with human beings is that they think, even in their sin, the Lord can have can protect them. Hey, he said to me the other day, whoever that call me in sin is inviting more problem. You must confess your sin. We pay for your sin before you start calling him. Yes, you are inviting problem to yourself. Praise Master Jesus. The Bible told us 
in Romans 8 verse 18. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time. Now I'm talking to people who are not just only looking for the for the blessing of this earth, who also have hope one day, someday I will have I will find my way in heaven. Those who are not saying all oh, the blessing I need is only on this earth. I want to see my father in heaven. These are the people now the Lord is speaking to this time around. Because there are, so, there are so many Christians, all they want is this word. Father, bless me this word. Even if I go to hell, it's not a problem. That will not be my portion in the name of Jesus Christ. So therefore, it says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. A, this one alone can give you hope. No matter what you are going through, the day of joy is coming. The day that you, you, you forever say, hey, I never knew the Lord will hold me this way. I never knew I can ever be like this. The day is coming in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible told us in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 19, if in this world, if in this life is speak to you now, you that is all you are looking for is I want to be blessed, blessed, blessed in this world alone. He said, No. Listen very well. First Corinthians 15, verse 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, only to buy car. Like some churches, all the priests is faith, 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 faith on earth here. They don't tell their members about heaven or hell. All they're saying is about to, how to budget, how to become MD here on earth. Say, listen, you that man of God, whoever you are, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. You are miserable with your jet. You are miserable with that, with houses you have. You are miserable with that wonderful job you think you have. If only in this world, you have hope in Christ. Hmm. You are you you are embracing problem. You are embracing miserability. So therefore, let us put more hope in Christ, even the world we cannot see now in heaven. Praise Master Jesus. For I record that the suffering of this present time are not worthy. This is my hope. This is my hope. I am no more, I am not concerned about it of this world anymore. Because I know I cannot live in this world forever. This world is not my own. I am only passing by. I am only walking along. So therefore, the blessing ahead of me is much more than the pain I am going through now. The Lord is speaking to you also. It is not worth to be compared with the blessing the Lord is keeping for you. Praise Master Jesus. He said to us in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. That car you can see now can be destroyed at, at, at any time. That house, you can be out there before you come back, is brought down. They are all temporary. But the things which, can, which are not seen are eternal. Let us work out our salvation for heaven. Don't serve God because of you need jobs, sister and brother. Don't serve God because of you need documents. There are people who have that document, they are no more today. Think about that. That car you are strong to have. I must get the car, this car. Some people have 10 of them. They are, they, are in, they are in six feet now. The cars are there. People are still driving them. So people are, ah, I must have this house by all means. People have better than such a house. They are no more again. So nothing this world is worth dying yourself for. The only thing that is worth dying for is heaven. Look up to those things that you cannot see which are in heaven. And take them away from all these temporary things. I'm not saying it's bad to drive a car. No, it's not bad. It's not bad to have, it, to have But don't depend on them. Don't live your life for them. Don't serve, God, don't serve them as, now your, as your God now. Maybe we worship our, our job as God. 
We worship our cast as God. We worship even what is not supposed to be so. Remember, our God is a jealous God. He said in Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. I'm running up because of time. Trust in the Lord with all the heart. Don't leave some parts for your car. Don't leave some parts for your wife or your husband. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't leave some parts for your, for your bishop, for your apostle. No. Give all to the Lord. Give all your trust to him alone. Trust in the Lord with all the heart. And lean not in their own understanding. In all their ways, acknowledge him. In riches, acknowledge him. In that failure, acknowledge him. In that sickness, acknowledge him. In your perfect head, acknowledge him. In anything you are doing, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. He's the only direct you. He's the only director that will not derail you. No other person knows tomorrow. No other person knows what will, what will happen tomorrow. He's the only person that knows it. Put a trust in him. It will direct you right. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I read Revelation 21, verse 2 to 5. I read it through because of time. Say, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Yes. For the first heaven and the first earth will pass away. The one we are now, they will pass away. First heaven, second heaven, they will pass away. Only the heaven of God will remain the same. The first earth and the first heaven will pass away, and there will no more see again. I want you now to remove your eyes away from all these things where I'm reading here for you, so you will remove your eyes from all this, so this will go, they all shall be burnt down. All this that, that, that is priving you from serving God now, you are going to lose them. So therefore, you will abandon them now and embrace God with all your mind. Verse 2. I'm reading, I'm reading Revelation 21, verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all their all tears from their face, from their eyes, and there shall be no more death anymore, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. And he said unto me, Write for this word are true and faithful. Let us work for such a new kingdom. Let us work for such a new government in heaven. Take your eyes away from the things of this world, they are temporary. They will all perish away. Let us depend on God totally. Depend on Him and trust Him. And lean on Him. Learn from Him. And your life will be embraced with riches, blessing, peace, and every other thing you ever desire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. Amen. Brethren, this is the word of God this hour. The bottom line is this. Learn from the Lord. Whatever you need in life is in His hand. And totally depend on Him. Praise Master Jesus. Oh, yeah. This is the time to fear and to honor God. It is written, God we appear. And to dwell with man. This is the time to fear God. And to honor Him. It is written. God will appear. And to dwell 
with man. If God appeared today, where will he find you? We find you in sin. Will you meet the Lord in shame on that day? After all the sleepless nights, all you are still praying and working for is the temporary thing that will be bought away. The only reason why you are connecting is because of your job, is because of your marriage. Hey, there's something better than that. You are connecting because you have to be pregnant, you have to get child, you have to have there's something better than that you cannot see. Work for that one, you cannot see. And the things of this world shall be added unto you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Are you out there? You are not born again. You are totally out of it. You are living against your soul, body, and spirit. The Lord is by your door now. Say, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Revelation 3, 20. If he will not force you, if anyone shall open, and I will come in and abode with the person. It's at the door again now. Will you open now and allow him in? Are you there? You are not accepted Christ as a personal savior. Or maybe you were born again. But because of the things around you, because of the situation, you never knew that that situation was making way for you to have a better life. <clears throat> you fell back. The Lord needs you again now. The door of mercy is still open. Maybe after this message now, trumpet and sound, no more repentance again. So, are you there? You want to reconcile back to God? Or you want to give that to Christ? Say, I am here. I am here. I am here. God bless you. Reconciliation yes. and giving your life to Christ. The door is open. Now, maybe you are, you are a kind of person, the only reason you are, you, are, you are meeting God is only to, to gain the things of this world. You are not born again. Only when you are looking for documents, looking for a job, looking for all those things, you remember God is the Savior. You are not born again. You are, you are, you are an infidel. I also say I'm here. So it will help you. Because with that mind, you will go to hell. So, those who want to give us to Christ, say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight. I've heard your word. I realize that I am a sinner. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me clean with your precious blood. I accept you tonight as my Lord and personal Savior. Take my name away from the book of death. And write it in the book of life. And I am born again tonight. Thank you for saving my soul. Hell have lost me forever. And heaven have gained their own back again. In Jesus' name. Amen. And as many other who have declared this declaration, maybe in on the website, on Google Hangouts, wherever you have this situation, heaven is rejoicing because of you, and you will never go back to sin again to give them shame again in the name of Jesus Christ. Every sort of dog in your life that make dog to eat and vomit and eat it again is gone out of your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ. You have put your hand on the plow, you will never look back in Jesus' name. And on the last day, this joy shall be full, fulfilled in heaven again as we enter heaven in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.